This week, exposed container dashboards, unlock windows with Cortana, Firefox buffer overflow, unbreakable smart locks that are breakable, inside te insider Tesla threat. You can win Jeopardy and still be dumb. Jason Wood from Paladin Security joins us for expert commentary. So stay tuned for this episode of Hack Naked News. This is Security Weekly. For security professionals, by security professionals. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show that brings you the security news each week. And despite popular belief, we do wear pants. It's Hack Naked News. The breach was huge news at the time. Linux monitoring tool. List of affected devices, you can check out the link in the show notes. Ars Technica is reporting that hackers have cracked the Nintendo Switch this week. Tracking people's locations and stuff like that. You'll want to be rolling out updates if you're using Lenovo hardware. Do you have a website, an external presence, employees, an office? Any of these things can be compromised and attacked. How are you defending your assets? Have you penetration tested your public assets? Start 2018 by taking a proactive approach to securing your vulnerable areas. Black Hills Information Security has been helping companies find their weaknesses since 2008. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com and see how they can help you sleep better at night. Welcome everyone to Hack Naked News, episode 178. Thank you. Sorry, my laptop uh, decided not to cooperate with me today. So I've only got this other... Anyway, um, it is Tuesday, June 19th, 2018. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian. Excited to be here for this episode of Hack Naked News. We're broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios a quick reminder to check out some of our on-demand material. If you want to see some of our presentations on penetration testing and endpoint security, visit securityweekly.com forward slash on-demand. And now, the security news for this week. A study by a company called Lacework finds 300 unsecured container orchestration dashboards. Lacework conducted an analysis of cloud-hosted container orchestration deployments and discovered 21,169 of them were public-facing. Of those, only 300 deployments were found to have open administrative dashboards without any credentials. And while this is not overwhelming evidence of insecure container orchestration platforms, it does speak to a problem that could be much worse as adoption of these technologies continues to grow. Hackers who sabotage the Olympic Games return for more mischief. The advanced hacking group that sabotaged the Winter Olympics in February has struck again, according to Kaspersky, anyhow. This time, the attacks were targeted at financial institutions in Russia, chemical and biological threat prevention labs in France, Switzerland, the Netherlands, and the Ukraine. Uh, while this could very well be the same group that hacked the Olympics, likely it really doesn't matter. And the important part of this report <clears throat> is for all of those who are being targeted to be aware that this is happening so they can put some type of threat uh, prevention in that will fend off the attacks before they happen, which, however, is easier said than done. <clears throat> uh, talking to Cortana could help you unlock or help an attacker unlock your Windows 10 computer. A researcher discovered that by simply typing while Cortana starts to listen to a request or a question on a locked device, he could bring up the search menu. Um, the researcher didn't even have to say anything to Cortana, but simply clicked on the tap and say button and started typing in words. Uh, this was reported on the McAfee blog and, and was fixed this week by Microsoft. So it turns out you didn't even have to talk to it. Uh, it was just about clicking and a very easy bypass for Windows 10, which is handy if you forget your password, perhaps. Uh, and, unless you apply the patches and then, you know, this doesn't work anymore. A former uh, ex-CIA employee is charged with leaking Vault 7 hacking tools to WikiLeaks, a 29-year-old former CIA computer programmer who was charged with possession of child pornography last year has now been charged with masterminding the largest leak of classified information in the agent's history. Uh, agency's history. Joshua Adam Schultz, uh, who once created malware for both the CIA and the NSA to break into adversaries' computers, was indicted Monday by the Department of Justice on 13 charges of allegedly stealing 
and transmitting thousands of classified CA documents, software projects, and hacking utilities. <clears throat> Excuse me. Initially, he was charged with possession of child pornography. Uh, however, they, uh, again, now revised that. I know he was wondering what would cause them to, what evidence they found to be able to charge him with those 13 additional uh, charges. Firefox fixes a critical buffer overflow. Earlier this month, Mozilla announced an advisory. That's MFSA 2018-14, for those curious. Uh, for his Firefox web browser, noting that version 60.0.2 for both Firefox and Firefox supported uh, extended support releases, as well as the legacy extended report, uh, support release 52.8.1, now have a fix for a critical level buffer overflow vulnerability discovered by Yvonne Fratrick of the Google Project Zero. It occurs when Firefox's implementation of the Skia library, an open source graphics library, that is used um, by almost all of the mainstream browsers. <clears throat> if you call your lock unbreakable, that might be a problem because in, unless you you know you got bolt cutters, I mean that means it's breakable. However, the story goes on, and there are now three vulnerabilities in locks from a company called Taplock. That's two P's. Uh, so these three vulnerabilities, as I can recall from reading all these articles, are number one, you can pop the back off of the lock with a screwdriver and unlock it. Number two, Bluetooth low energy MAC address is used as the unlock key via your smartphone, which basically means you're transmitting the key to unlock it. Uh, it also does have a fingerprint reader on it, uh, which in a previous show, we were, we were curious what it was. So it's Bluetooth or a fingerprint reader. Um, but you don't need to chop off anyone's finger because the third vulnerability gives you even more options. A poor session handling allows an attacker to access anyone's account, which includes the location of where you last unlocked your lock. Taplock's response is, Taplock is pushing out an important security patch. It goes on to say, this patch addresses several Bluetooth and communication vulnerabilities that allowed unauthorized users to illegally uh, gain access to the lock. Taplock will continue to monitor the latest security trends and provide updates from time to time. That's right, folks. From from time to time, they might do that when maybe they feel like it, uh, I suppose. Uh, it, it speaks to me that Taplock does, still does not understand security and, and lacks security culture in their organization, as is evidenced by the three recent vulnerabilities. Uh, Tesla has discovered that uh, an insider threat, which turns out to be pretty damaging, has occurred within its network. According to CNBC, the high-profile uh, executive uh, Elon Musk sent an email to Tesla employees this weekend uh, alleging that there was a saboteur in the company ranks who had changed code uh, on an internal product, logged into systems without authorization, and leaked large amounts of highly sensitive Tesla data to unknown third parties. Seven-time Jeopardy winner pleads guilty to hacking into emails of students and faculty at the university where she worked. So just because you can doesn't mean you won't get caught and likely go to jail. Shame on you. Uh, as the story reads, a record-setting Jeopardy contestant who teaches history at a college in Michigan pleaded guilty last week to accessing email accounts of fellow professors, school administrators, and students. Stephanie Jazz took advantage of a campus-wide password reset to spy on emails sent by individuals, including the president and outgoing uh, vice president. She's been charged with two felonies and terminated. Uh, her employment was terminated with the university this past January. Recently, prosecutors dropped the second charge after she pled guilty last week to unauthorized access to a computer system, and I believe faces three to five years in prison, including some fines. With that, we'll take a short break, come back, and have some expert commentary from none other than Jason Wood. Today's determined attackers easily bypass even the most advanced network defenses. Trying to ramp up staff to detect their back doors can cost thousands of dollars and take months, even years. With Active Countermeasures AI Hunter, we enable junior analysts to detect even the most advanced back doors in a matter of hours. Sign up for a demo and purchase our product today by visiting activecountermeasures.com forward slash HNN. Active Countermeasures, make every analyst a hunter. 
Welcome back, everyone, to Hack Naked News. I have with me on the lines via Skype none other than Jason Wood from Paladin Security. Jason, welcome. Hey, Paul. Good to be back with you. Yes, nice to have you. Uh, I'm down to one laptop. So uh, what are we talking about today? Well, uh, today we get to, as a, a friend of mine put it, have a persistent listening device in our hotel rooms, otherwise known as Marriott is deploying Alexa to uh, to their hotels. Um, so yeah, it, it looks like this summer, Amazon's Echo will be coming to a, a hotel near you, potentially. Uh, Marriott Hotels is starting an initial proof of concept, it looks like, of placing Echoes into 10 of their hotels this summer. Uh, the idea here is that hotel guests will have a convenient way to order room service, get recommendations for restaurants in the area, or request some other kind of hotel service without needing to call the front desk uh, and actually use the phone. Not only uh, those uh, items there, the, the devices will allow the guests to check out of their rooms, um, turn off the lights in their in their hotel rooms, maybe even place them uh, some some soft music to fall asleep to at night. Um, and later this year, it sounds like uh, plans are that Amazon will update their these hotel based Echoes to allow guests to uh, link their Amazon accounts to the Echo in their room, what? so they can play their own playlists and audiobooks. That's a really bad idea. Uh, yeah, that was kind of my thought. When I saw this article, it was just like, ooh, this jumps all over. Yeah, jumped like, out I, I was with you. I'm like, yeah, so what? So there's a, an Amazon you know, Echo device in, in your hotel room, likely very highly customized for hotel services. Uh, and you know, if it doesn't have access to your personal data, the risk is it could be you know, listening. Of course, I mean, there could be any number of ways in which someone could listen in the hotel. And like... Let's be frank, you've stayed in a hotel before. The walls are super thin. Everyone can hear what's going on in your <laughs> hotel room anyway, so it really doesn't matter to the people are listening. <laughs> well, there is a certain amount of truth in that. Everybody probably has some good horror stories about thin walls. Oh, yeah. Not <laughs> to share on the show. Uh, now I'm having flashbacks. But um, the, the uh, scary part is that it allows you to link your personal credentials. Which yeah, we, as that's, security that's professionals, not out yet. we've always advised against. Like if there's a... And this typically happens when you travel, right? The, the USB ports where you charge your phone, the, if you don't don't allow data in that connection, right, would be the advice uh, if you have to use them. Logging into a public terminal with any of your accounts is a bad idea. Uh, and putting your credentials on an, an Echo device in a hotel room, like how do you get them off? Yeah. Um, yeah, The uh, this was kind of interesting. I mean, these are customized devices specifically for the hotel. Right, Amazon is is building it for this uh, this deployment scenario, and Amazon does state that they are deleting any data collected on these devices every day. Which then it's like, all right, I put my credentials in, I link my account, and now I have to do it again the next day. Apparently, if that's what's happening, um, yeah. But what that's uh, someone else could ha gain be you, get your room, and you haven't removed your credentials if it's just every day. This is silly, yeah, I mean, Jason. This is silly. Never put your credentials on anything in a hotel room. <laughs> Ever. Uh, Marriott has said that if customers want, they can, of course, request that the Echo be removed uh, oh, from the, remo the room so you don't have it there. So I just thought this was a really interesting development in how IoT is continuing to uh, creep in some ways or speed along in others out into our lives. Um you know, depending on how this deployment goes, because again, this sounds like they're going to ten hotels. This is like a proof of concept launch, uh, and I suspect that this is going to go well enough for what they want. We can probably expect to see Marriott deploy these devices to, you know, large numbers of their hotels, and other hotels will start picking up on this and start also doing it themselves. Um, you know, after all, the idea from the hotel, you know, if they can automate some of these things, like. Um, Send me up some extra towels or something like that without calling the front desk who's Dude, busy trying right, to check so people on. in and stuff. Let's back Maybe up it and makes talk it easier. about how horrible that could go with an Echo device in your room. Because like some people just have a tougher time. Like, And I think it trains to certain people's voices. And it, like my wife is screaming at the Echo device all the time. How, how are you going to order room service or towels? 
Be like, I need, I need towels. Right. Oh, you'd like a wake up call at 4 a.m. No, I want towels. Wake up call set for 4 a.m. <laughs> this is a terrible <laughs> idea all around. <laughs> terrible. Well, you know what? I, I, I laugh at it because I mean, you get into a hotel. My, you know, little nephew who is probably four, mm-hmm. and has some of the most garbled speaking you can imagine. Uh, Alexa understands him pretty dang well. And I can only imagine the things that, that he of, would order right, and do. Right? Yeah. How do you prevent your kids from ordering stuff from there? Yeah. Now, they did say that the shop, if you link your account, shopping, like to order stuff on Amazon would be disabled. So, oh, but, you know, you can get yeah, but order stuff from the hotel. 40 people. Yeah. So. Uh, and now know. go back to my other point, too, where the walls are really thin. What's to say that the device in the next room isn't picking up what I'm saying? And the room service is getting sent to them instead of me. Just all around, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> That's what I'm discovering. The more I think about this. Yeah, it's it's kind of freaky. Uh, it brings up a lot of questions to me as well. Um, you know, they say that, they're one, they're deleting the data daily. Well, we've heard that story before, right? Mm-hmm. You know, oh, we take everything, security and confidentiality very serious, da 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 And we find out, no, it didn't actually get deleted. Um, how does the, the linked accounts get deleted? You already brought that up. Uh, could the hotel versions end up with additional software deployed on them that listens for things like sounds of violence or destruction in the room? Uh, notify hotel security? You know, I don't think that would be a out of reach. I've, I've detected that you are smoking. The sprinkler Ooh, system hey, will go off in five, four. <laughs> At least gives you a warning, right? <laughs> um, and then we've got these devices, of course, sitting in the room where people have physical access. And that's something we always talk about in security. Physical access is owning the device. You could have lookalikes put in there. Some hotels, I'm sure, are going to use cheap knockoff looking devices for similar functionality. Who knows what those will be be like? Um, you know, could be potentially much less secure than an Echo. So, yeah, there's some geeky parts of me that... You'll be able to open your safe with it as well. You can just say open safe and the safe will open. I mean, that's perfectly secure, right? I like that. Well, you have to speak the pin, you know, one, two, three, four. There, let me in. (laughs) Out loud. We're... Yeah. Again, the walls are thin. Thin walls. (laughs) Thin walls. Yeah, so yeah, there's a there's a geeky part of me that thinks, gee, this is kind of cool new toy in the hotel, but really, you know, I'm not terribly comfortable with After this. After we for talk all it of the through, Jason, discussed. it's a terrible idea. <laughs> um, if nothing else, uh, perhaps being a little paranoid here, but here we go, yet another set of microphones in our room, listening to whatever. We don't like the idea of government surveillance, but it's okay if it's Amazon and Marriott. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, but I expect, you know, you're, you're going to see more stuff like this happening. And I could see folks coming back and saying, Ooh, I kind of like that, you know, and, and other hotels trying to jump on it and do the same thing. So, uh, a bad Im- implementation coming to a hotel near you. Awesome. Jason, thank you very much with that. That concludes this episode of hack naked news. Thank you everyone for listening and watching. See you next time.